West African countries of the Eight Nation Economic and Monetary Union are struggling to raise funds on the regional capital markets as investors demand higher interest rates amid tightening liquidity. The West African Economic and Monetary Union is an organization of eight mainly French-speaking states within the ECOWAS which share a customs union and currency union. Ivory Coast, the biggest economy in the West African Economic and Monetary Union, failed to raise 85 billion CFA francs, that's about $142 million, through bonds issued at an interest rate of around 5.5%. It returned to the market to raise the funds at an interest rate above 6%. Mali, Bene, Burkina Faso and Senegal have all had to postpone debt auctions. Now, in the case of Senegal, it returned to the market to raise over 201 billion CFA at an interest rate above 6%, the finance ministry said in a statement on March 31. Now, according to reports, the failure to raise much-needed funds from the regional market may force states to look for alternative cheaper financing sources, such as the International Monetary Fund, to avoid budget shortfalls. Now, to further break down this discussion, I have Dr. Bettine Covey, who is a fundamentalist economist and Africa economics analyst, and um, he is joining me from Cotonou in Benin Republic. Thank you so much, Doctor, for joining. My pleasure. Now, we see that um, the WEMO member states are struggling to raise uh, funds uh, from the regional capital market. Does it have anything to do with the demand uh, from the investors uh, looking at the higher interest rates that they are asking for, or there are other major problems that we are not seeing? Well, investors will only invest when they have something to gain back. Let us, when you, the inflation rate is higher than the interest rate that the country is, is offering, nobody will invest in such bond. And when you consider the inflation rate in our sub-region, the eight countries we are talking about, is more than 6%. That means when you invest 1 million CFA in one year, the value of that 1 million will be less than what you invested the moment you were buying the bond. So the investors are right. If the countries cannot raise the, 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 the rate of the, the interest, that means they just want to take their people's money and say they are investing because economy is a matter of uh, the, uh, the demand and the offer. And I fully percent support those who refuse to invest in those bonds. So now, um, Doctor, now that we're seeing that um, these member countries are having issues with um, local currency debt and uh, bond issuance, I'd like to know what the current state of the fiscal um, probability or power or prowess is as regards um, the discussion because we are trying to ensure that we know that these countries have what it takes in terms of its finance to drive its economy. So what is their fiscal position as it were? The main problem, the, the only way to really understand what is happening is those countries are not really controlling their currency. When you take Naira, Nigeria has a central bank that can decide anything about Naira. When you take a CD in Ghana, Ghana has a central bank that can decide. But when you take the eight countries, we are relying on the central bank of France. And anything that happens with Euro will have influence on our currency. So our problem is deeper than what you are looking at on the market. We are somehow influenced by, by the international uh, situation in Ukraine, but we are not saying the truth to our people. The solution should be West African Francophone countries should have the control on their own currency, and they can have a serious uh, a, a, a financial market. Otherwise, we don't have anything like that so far. So, uh, though these countries are actually living in denial, we are aware that they are going through liquidity crisis also. Now, is that also a major problem for them? And what have they done in terms of steps taken to address that particular area? That's the problem. 
as I am I was saying, mm -hmm. the solution is not in their hand. The solution will have to come from France. It's like when you are having problem in your house and it is another person that will decide on your behalf, how can you solve the solution? So the real solution is to have full control on our currency and we can decide. That's the real solution. But we are not courageous enough politically to ask France to release the control of our currency, to release the control of our economy. So far, if that's not done, we don't have any solution ahead. Uh, so, so why does it seem as though France has some sort of influence over this um, country's uh, economy? Why does it seem as though it has so much say in how the economy is driven and how operations go in that particular region? Is it because it is a francophone um, region or because uh, these, some of these countries were formerly colonized by the French? Yeah, you have mentioned it. It, this is a result of the colonization. Nigeria was using, was controlled when you were still under British, you were using their currency. Ghana also, but since our Francophone countries are so-called uh, 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 independent, we have not broken that link. And any Francophone country president that want to really stop that link, you will hear that there is a coup d'etat there. So the main problem, our citizens, instead of refusing to invest in their country's bond, they should help their politicians or their leaders to have the, the, the support of their people back and say, no, we want now to decide about our own currency. Now, the main problem is also this. We are not really, uh, how to, to put it? Uh, the citizens are not involved in their responsibility in refusing to buy their own country a bond. They are not really uh, involved in their economy. I guess if that's not, if they are not involved, there will be a, a problem. And I don't think there is a problem of liquidity. No, the problem is not a matter of liquidity. It, the problem is even you people, even you as journalists, you will never invest in a bond that will lose your money tomorrow. So that's the, that's the main problem. Mm. Well, nobody wants to lose anyway. Nobody gets into a business uh, with the idea or mentality of wanting to lose. But then that is understandable. Let's look at um, Ivory Coast and Senegal because there are a bit of shining lights when it comes to a thriving economy within the context of our discussion. Now, um, Ivory Coast reached an agreement with IMF earlier in the month for a $2.6 billion loan. And Senegal is also said to be going back to the renegotiating table um, with um, IMF, as it were. Now, do you think that these deals are good for the these um, two African countries because of course we know that these monies come in the form of loans that will need to be paid back and uh, these countries also have issues with their debt burden so do you think it's a good thing to do for them to seek um, loans or to borrow monies um, from the International Monetary Fund and other um, foreign international institutions that's the main problem that's the what is killing our economies because when they go back to IMF, they will make the loan in dollar. But in their country, they will use, they will not use dollar directly. That, those do, dollars that they are, they are taking from IMF will be sent to France, and France will send them a CFA. So at the end of the day, what are they receiving CFA? But what will they pay? They will pay in dollar. What I suggest is they should talk with our citizens, their citizens, to really buy those bonds in local market, in local currency, and they will invest because it's not good at all to rely on IMF. That is not really the solution.
All right, so what about if um, these countries come together to have a single currency, to have one particular kind of currency? Do you think it will improve um, the value of the currency and, of course, improve the value of their economy as it were? Because we're looking at how to deal with inflation, um, how to have them control the financial market, how they can deal with liquidity issues, though you have said that that is not the, really the main issue. But then we're looking at the possibility of having a single currency. Would that help in any way? What they really need, these, these are eight countries that have, are using the same currency. But are they really interconnected when economy is consigned? What, what is Benin selling to Cote d'Ivoire? What is Cote d'Ivoire buying from Benin? What is Senegal? They are all, they are, we are using all eight countries using the same currency, but has really no economic link. So, they don't really have a, 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 any currency together. The day they will decide to build a, a real economic a, 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 a organization, working together, buying, pro, buying what, producing what is needed in Togo, Togo producing what is needed in Cote d'Ivoire. In that condition, they will, we can talk about having the same currency. But now, this, what they have together is the name of the same currency, but that is controlled by France. What they have in common is just France controlling their currency. Hmm. So that's the main challenge we are having. All right. Well, um, thank you so much, um, Doctor, for joining this conversation. Uh, we'll just keep it that way and hope that um, there could be some sort of um, reform to come their way, most especially as a look at how to improve the value of the currency and their economy. We're looking at how they can deal with the financial market and get value for what they have. But then we'll just continue to monitor the situation and see what comes to them. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you.